Catalysts are all around us. There are catalysts in your car converting toxic emissions to more breathable air. In your body, biological catalysts called enzymes are constantly working to keep you healthy. Some people may say that coffee is a catalyst to get them out of bed every morning. I know I would. I've always been obsessed with puzzles, so it makes a lot of sense now that in my graduate research, I get to spend every day designing nanoparticle catalysts to put together chemical puzzles. My research consists of three parts that all work well with each other. The first part, how do we design a nanoparticle catalyst? The second, how do we choose what chemical puzzles that we want to put together once we design that catalyst? And the third, how can we put together this nanoparticle catalyst under the mildest conditions possible? As a chemist, I understand a catalyst as anything that lowers the amount of energy required for a chemical reaction to take place. What this means is that chemical reactions that without a catalyst might be impossible, even if you waited hundreds of years, can suddenly become possible with the right catalyst. So while we've already been over that coffee is a pretty good catalyst, nanoparticles are even better. Nanoparticles are so small that if you were to compare your size to that of the sun, it would be the same as if you tried to compare your size to that of a nanoparticle. And being so small, they are nearly completely made up of surfaces. And these surfaces offer a lot of space for chemical reactions to take place. In the lab of Shohang Sun, I can create nanoparticles of all different shapes, sizes, chemical compositions. And the signature of our lab is that we try to have complete control of all of these things at the same time. <laughs> Sounds pretty hard. <laughs> so with endless possibilities and combinations at my fingertips, I must also think about what type of chemical puzzle I even want to put together before I design my nanoparticle catalyst. And while this may sound a little like science fiction, right? Trying to control something a million times smaller than a pencil tip, when I thought about what chemical puzzle I wanted to put together, it came back to something natural and all around us, plants. As a chemist, I think about plants as biomass, and it refers to crops, wood, and plant-based materials that are not used for food. Let's think about it. When you eat a piece of corn, do you also eat the 12-foot-tall stalk that it comes on? Probably not. I wouldn't judge you. And that's biomass. Chemically, biomass consists of three parts, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. And all three of these things are tough, fibrous materials that are chemically complex. What does that mean? Wow, it's pretty complex. <laughs> it is easy to look at a molecule, a sample of a lignin molecule, and get completely overwhelmed. Even I do. But, when you look a little bit closer, this really complicated large molecule can be broken down into smaller parts. And not only does this make this molecule more manageable and more easy to look at, but it also makes it more intriguing because each one of these smaller chemical units can show up in more valuable chemicals like pharmaceuticals, plastics, polymers, and beyond. It is like nature already put together a puzzle of useful chemicals, and now it is our job to take the puzzle apart and put it back together again the way that we want them. And it's here that my nanoparticle catalyst can be part of this chemical reassembly team. Palladium nanoparticles have been the go-to for years for these types of chemical reactions. However, they often require high temperatures and high pressures to undergo these chemical reactions effectively. Well, this comes to a very important third part of my research, that the reaction conditions in which the chemical conversion take place is also really important and something that we have to think about. So while I've already been over that palladium by itself is not good for this chemical reaction, when I alloyed, made together, palladium atoms with gold atoms, to form gold palladium alloy catalysts, it was not, over, not only much better at doing these chemical conversions, but it could do so mildly without the use for high temperatures 
and high pressures. So it is my hope for this field that we can continue to design new nanoparticle catalysts, that we can begin to piece together all of the chemicals we would ever want or need for more sustainable sources, like plants, and do it under much more mild conditions. And then, once we think about doing that, we can begin to think about chemical puzzles that haven't even been imagined yet. Thank you. <laughs>